official, but it, it seemed like as these things were leaking out or um, rumored earlier that Zach was like a late addition to the team, which sort of paralleled, you know, his career that he's just sort of being noticed. And now that, uh, you know, he's in this position, what have you seen in him in the practices this week and his game? And how do you think it will help uh, your team at, uh, in Japan? Well, I can tell you a couple of things. One, uh, Zach is someone we wanted on the team. We try to, you know, you try to keep a lid on everything. Uh, I don't think anybody was thinking about uh, Jeremy Grant out there in the public. You know, they're always thinking of the, the names that we hear all the time, but we're trying to put a team together, and that takes a lot of different elements. And we're looking to have as many tools as we can, depending on what we run into. So everybody fits a role in, in some way. Uh, with Zach, uh, he is somebody who really wanted to do this, number one. Uh, his physical skills are abundant and obvious. Uh, his length, uh, his athleticism, I think will translate very well. Uh, he wants to play defense uh, to the nth degree. He knows that that's what we want from him. Uh, we also want energy, and obviously uh, his scoring ability is, is always available. Uh, but I think through this camp, what he's going to do is become a little bit more solid playing with all these guys. Uh, Decision-making wise, I'm talking about, you know, being able to play with these guys, but his energy level is high. His commitment uh, is fantastic and he's willing to do anything we ask him to do. Uh, and, you know, he's stated that he's, He's somebody that I think is very different from most other players that we have on the team. So uh, those are the, you know, skills and things we're looking for from him. Uh, thank you, as always, for your grace and aplomb. You take care. I love you. Thanks. Next up, we'll go with uh, Tim Reynolds, and then we'll go to uh, Amari. Thanks, Craig. Hi, Pop. Howdy, howdy. Howdy, howdy. Uh, you, um, will you have to promote some guys to have some extra bodies tomorrow night? And what are you sort of looking to get out of tomorrow um, from your first real time out? Well, yeah, we will have to have a few bodies, uh, you know, for the group that's here. But as you might imagine, you know, it's, it's the beginning and we just, we don't want to skip any steps. We want to make sure that we have a defensive emphasis that everybody understands how we want to play defense. Uh, we want to emphasize ball movement and player movement. Uh, you know, without the defense of three seconds, you know, a lot of the, a lot of the teams pack it in uh, and you got to move them. And that's not going to happen if you have ball stoppers or if you don't change sides of the court, bodies don't move. So we've been working on that a lot. So we want to see, you know, how we're moving together uh, on offense and on defense, if everybody's pulling their load, being accountable to each other. So, uh, you know, other than that, it's, it's obeying the basketball gods, really, you know, uh, making sure these guys who are all very good players know that they're playing with other very good players. Uh, and so, in a sense, we all become a role player, if that makes any sense. You know, I'm attacking for a teammate. Uh, I, I'm not going to be isolated as much as normal. I'm not going to get as many shots as normal. That type of thing. Thank you, Pop. Go ahead, Amari, and next up is uh, David uh, Chinalalo. Hi, hi, Coach. I hope you can hear me. Um, this is Amari Padrillo, French newspaper, Um huh? You said you said three days ago that you wanted your team to first get a good sense of how strong the competition is going to be uh, in uh, Tokyo. Um, could you maybe elaborate? Regarding the French team, what difference to the most two years ago in China? Do you think they may be even better this year? And is the fact that we're going to be playing them first a good thing? Yeah, I, you know, I think uh, the French team uh, has been very good for a long time. They've played together for a long time. They've added players. And every year, all these teams, including France, has, you know, one or two more NBA players, which means they have more talent every year. So, you know, the gap is 
smaller and smaller every year as far as talent is concerned. So it's about execution. Uh, the coaching staff, I'm very familiar with. They got, you know, they're great people and they do a fine job. Uh, everybody is hungry. You know, everybody wants to win. So uh, having respect for the opponents, I think, is uh, step number one. Uh, more so than anything else, rebounding, shooting, playing defense. If you don't respect uh, these teams, you're in big trouble because of the coaching, the talent, the execution. And, you know, it'll be difficult for us to execute as well as a lot of these teams do, given the fact that they played together for so many years. So uh, we realize that that means we have to really prepare well with the time that we have. David, go ahead, and then we'll go to Akiko uh, Yamaki. Hi, coach. This is Davide Lato. I'm with the La Gazzetta dello Sport in Italy. Uh, Hi. Great to see you. Um, wh what are your expectations from the Olympics? Not, not just the, the basketball tournament, but the Olympics themselves. Well, uh, I'm not sure what you mean by expectations, but uh, in, in what area? I mean... You said other than basketball, do you mean going to dinner or seeing? Yeah, the I, or? I know. I know there will be some some restrictions, but uh, you know the Olympics are for many people like a dream come true. I, I know this year it's going to be a lot different with all the restrictions in place. Right. But I'm curious what it, what the Olympics mean for you in, in general, and what do you think you will be able to leave from that? Uh, huh? Well, I think you know everybody's uh, you know ultimate goal in going to the Olympics is to to win you know, to win the high jump or win the gold medal in basketball or, you know, win the pole vault, whatever it might be. Uh, that's number one. But it's also uh, an honor to be there and represents a lot of work that all these athletes and coaches did over many years. So it's like a, it's like the, uh, the pinnacle, you know, of, of competition in that sense, uh, where you pit your skills uh, against the world uh, it's a, a time of camaraderie uh, of honoring each other and one of those events in life that uh, is very 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 rare so it's it's to, it's to be honored it's to be uh, cherished and if on top of that you have time to enjoy the country to some degree uh, that makes it even better It seems that might be a little bit difficult this year, but uh, we'll wait and see what the situation is when we get there. Nico, you're up next, and then we'll go to Fargo Franklin. Uh, yes, I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah, um, uh, yeah I'm, I work for Japanese newspaper, Kyodo News, and uh, yeah, it might be a little bit similar question, but um, I'd like to ask you the um, Olympic will be held without spectators. So what are your thoughts about it? And um, are the players disappointed about it? Uh, if I understood you correctly, oh, I'll try yeah. to answer. I, uh, whatever the situation is, we have to deal with it just like everybody else. Uh, you know, life is never perfect or the way you might want it at a specific time in your life. Uh, everybody gets, uh, you know, curveballs and hurdles and that sort of thing put in front of them. So whatever the situation might be when we arrive, uh, we'll deal with it. That's the only choice. Yeah. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Paco, you're up, and then we'll go with Joseph Naglucci. Hey, how you doing, Coach? Good. I hope you're well. Yes, sir. Same here. Uh, could you touch on Kevin Love and his leadership ability on the floor? Sure. Uh, you know, Kevin's been here before, so he's one of the veterans on the group. And he can reinforce a lot of things that we're trying to talk about as far as respect for the opponents and how tough a lot of these games have been. You know, people have the impression that, you know, America has uh, just, you know, destroyed people in, in these games. Uh, and... We all know that that's not true. Uh, they've been very competitive games very often. So uh, people like he and Kevin Durant are, are able to uh, describe that to people and make sure that they're aware. 
So in that sense, you know, his leadership is important, but uh, he also, uh, I think, you know, he has something to prove where, you know, the year didn't go for him that great. Uh, and I think at this point, he's thrilled to be part of this and hoping that he can, uh, you know, get back to his form and his rhythm. So he's working hard uh, to do that. And so far, I'm very pleased with what he's done. Thank you, Coach. You're welcome. Coach, thank you so much for joining us. Um, I wanted to ask you about the roles, about Kevin Durant, Draymond Green, and Kevin Love specifically. Obviously, they're the three former Olympians on this team. Can you kind of talk about what impact they'll have on the nine other players who will be making their Olympic debut? Well, you know, I think that overall, uh, they're, you know, a source of, of leadership as far as making everything real, you know, making everybody serious, uh, knowing – that it's a, a difficult uh, journey, uh, understanding what these teams present in the way of competition and how badly uh, they want to beat us. So, you know, everybody being accountable to each other is easier if you have guys that have been there before and understand the situation. So in that sense, uh, they're very important. Thank you. Welcome. We'll do two more questions, uh, Brian Lewis, and then we'll finish up. Since we started with Sam, we'll finish with Sam. Hey, Bob. Um, you addressed, you touched on Kevin Durant's leadership. I'm curious, I mean, at this point in his career where he's accomplished everything, uh, what do you think motivates him to, you know, commit to Tokyo? I mean, do you think, you know, obviously being whatever, having a chance to go maybe one gold medal ahead of, Kobe or to chase Carmelo's scoring record? I mean, do you think he thinks actively about those things or is it just, I love to hoop and I like to be out there? Right, you know, as far as those specific, you know, uh, goals or rewards or beating someone, I, I really have no idea what's in his head in that regard, but I am totally uh, convinced and understand that the reason he's doing this is because he loves to play. He loves the competition. He loves the camaraderie with the guys. Uh, he wants to win. Uh, and when he's playing basketball, he's happy. And that's the bottom line, common denominator, why he's here. So uh, I don't think it's any more complicated than that. Thank you. Well, I, I might add that uh, it's amazing and fortunate for us that he does feel that way because, you know, he's a heck of a player. But – to make that sacrifice again, uh, the way he's done in the past, I think is pretty laudable, and uh, he deserves a lot of credit for that. As do you know the other guys who, in a tough year, have uh, stepped up to represent their country. Thank you. We'll finish with uh, Sam Smith. I want to apologize for taking it away from the early study of your wine list. But I did have one quick question. Um, I got I it right over here, Sam. I got it over here. <laughs> I heard the man who cheated you out of a spot on the 72 team uh, spoke to your team uh, yesterday. Yes, it's, it still hurts. And I'm still uh, aggrieved, deeply aggrieved by the slight. And nobody was going there, really. Um, I wanted to ask uh, what Who was that guy? What was Doug Collins' message to the team? How was it received? And, and what does what his experience uh, bring to sure. uh, the young players? I know you would have voted for me over Doug Collins, right? Oh, yeah. I did. <laughs> okay. Um, Doug hit a home run yesterday, very honestly. He was fantastic. You know, I, I, wanted, him, I wanted him to – I wanted them to feel him. I wanted them to feel what the Olympics meant to him. Uh, and to this day, uh, what happened in 72 hurts him, uh, as you well know, I'm sure. Uh, and I wanted that to be, uh, you know, felt and transferred to our players, uh, how important these games are and how wonderful a memory they can have, uh, you know, if we are successful in, in this quest. So he did that. Uh, but he was also, you know, emotional about 
what the game has meant to him. Uh, he lauded our guys uh, for, you know, making this sacrifice uh, and wanted to, in some ways, warn them about, you know, how we had to become a family. Uh, you know, as I've said before, basically fall in love with each other uh, and be responsible to and for each other, accountable and play with that in our minds. And he got all that across. And he was especially effusive uh, about Kevin Durant because even though I've already said this afternoon about his love of the game and uh, the sacrifice he's making, you know, he's also been injured, uh, you know, quite a bit in the, in the last couple of years. Has gone through a tough time, uh, and he's still here. And Doug really made sure that uh, that was appreciated uh, by everyone in the basketball world. So he was he was great, Sam. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Coach. Thank you, Coach Papa.